Hello guys, in the clinical series discussion, uh, today we are going to talk about one of the important condition called as Charcot foot or neuropathic arthropathy. So it is the neuropathic arthropathy named after French neurologist Jean Martin Charcot. So it is a progressive denervation induced degeneration of the weight bearing joints of the foot. So what is the meaning of this? What is the meaning of progressive denervation induced degeneration? So, whenever there is a denervation to the joints, so what will happen from that particular joint, you will not have any kind of sensation because there is a denervation. So, why there is a degeneration followed by the denervation over here? So, for example, if you are not receiving any of the signals from that particular joint, if there is an injury to the joint, if there is any trauma to the joint or if there is any insult to the joint, you don't know that there is an insult, right? But you still use the joint more frequently like normal because you are not receiving any kind of a pain signals. So because of that repetitive minor trauma to those particular joints which got denervated will progressively go into a stage called as arthropathy. That is the reason we call this particular condition as progressive denervation induced degeneration meaning there will be a denervation of the joint and this denervated joint undergoes minor trauma or maybe some insult because of any of the uh, fracture or trauma or maybe because of any infection and that eventually leads to the development of arthropathy especially we can see this condition in the weight bearing joints of the foot. Now we know that it is a Charcot arthropathy. And in what conditions we will see this denervation induced degeneration. First of all, why there is a denervation? You need to know this cause uh, pretty precisely over here. Denervation mainly because of diabetes. So now you may think like why there is a denervation in diabetes. Remember the point. Long-standing diabetes, uncontrolled diabetes responsible for the development of neuropathy and nephropathy, especially peripheral neuropathy, right? So what happens in the peripheral neuropathy? So one important point you need to know about the diabetes is, diabetes is called as microvascular disease. So what is the meaning of this? Meaning, especially the terminal blood vessels, the micro vessels are damaged. Micro vessels become non-functional. When these micro vessels at the limbs become non-functional, then whatever the structures they supply, especially in the periphery, will be denervated. So initially what happened? There is a diabetes, uncontrolled and long-standing diabetes. It is called as microvascular disease, meaning blood supply to the terminal nerves will be compromised. So the nerves are dead at that particular location. So when the nerves are not working properly in the periphery, we call it as peripheral neuropathy. So because of the peripheral neuropathy, so the nerves which are innervating the joints will have loss of sensation. So because of the loss of sensation, what will happen? Eventually, there will be development of a condition called as Charcot arthropathy. So therefore, most commonly associated condition of Charcot neuropathy will be diabetes. So any patient, not only just diabetes, any patient with the loss of afferent proprioceptive fibers is susceptible to this degenerative process. So Charcot neuropathy is present in approximately 10% of the patients with diabetes and uh, it is typically presents as a unilateral localized inflammatory reaction in a focal area of the foot or the ankle with erythema, warmth and swelling that appears to be triggered by the trauma or repetitive micro trauma we can say. So let's uh, talk a little bit more about the pathogenesis of this condition even though it remains uncertain but it is likely to be multifactorial due to the combination of uh, mechanical vascular factors resulting from diabetic peripheral and autonomic neuropathy and metabolic abnormalities of the bone. And it is thought mainly because of the lack of proprioception secondary to the peripheral neuropathy may result in the ligamentous laxity, increased range of joint movement, instability and damage by the minor trauma to which relatively insensitive neuropathic foot is prone. 
So trauma to the neuropathic foot may trigger an exaggerated inflammatory response which is mediated by the release of pro-inflammatory cytokines examples like a tumor necrosis factor alpha and interleukin 1 beta resulting in the development of osteoarthropathy. So these are the two important cytokines have been shown to increase uh, the activation of the rank ligand which in turn increases the transcription factor that is nuclear factor kappa B. So this is what is the pathogenesis behind this condition. And the Charcot neuropathic arthropathy most frequently involves the foot and the ankle as I already mentioned about the weight bearing joints and most frequently involves torso metatarsal joint often called as Lisfranc joint which is affected in about 50% of the cases but any joint in the foot or ankle can be involved in Charcot neuropathy. But the focus is on the midfoot guys when the midfoot is involved in the Charcot foot the arch collapses that is what you can see on the screen you can clearly see the collapse of the arch uh, which rounds the bottom of the foot this is called as rocker bottom foot deformity what we will see whenever there is a midfoot involvement is there in the charco arthropathy so the foot as well as the ankle contains many of the soft tissue structures including extrinsic as well as intrinsic tendons as well as various ligaments and support structures that transfers energy and ground reactive forces during locomotion and this motion and foreplay a large role in pathological process of Charcot neuropathy and under weakened condition these forces lead to structural failure and deformity of the foot and ankle and with ongoing pressure and the lack of pain signals as a result of the sensory neuropathy the soft tissues are at a higher risk for breakdown as well as infection this is what we will see in the Charcot neuropathy. And now let us talk about how this particular condition is diagnosed. Remember guys in the early stages the Charcot foot is difficult to diagnose. X-rays are often normal and if X-rays and laboratory tests are normal, Charcot foot is diagnosed by knowing the signs of the condition. And Charcot foot is suspected in the persons who have diabetes and peripheral neuropathy associated with the following signs and symptoms which I already explained that is a red hot swollen foot without a foot ulcer and increased skin temperature in the affected foot compared with the contralateral foot. Now let us talk about the classification of the Charcot neuropathy based on the clinical as well as the radiographic changes which is useful to differentiate the three traditional stages of Charcot neuropathy and a fourth stage is also there which has been added called as stage 0 which is defined as a hyperthermic period immediately following injury has also been added guys. Although the patients in stage 0 have edema and erythema of the foot and ankle and no radiographic changes are yet visible. But still let us talk in detail about uh, all these stages. First let me talk about the stage 0 which is called as early or inflammatory stage. So in this particular stage there is a localized swelling, erythema and worm with little or no radiological abnormalities what we can identify. And in the stage 1 which is called as the developmental stage where we can see the swelling, redness and warmth and bony changes such as fracture, subluxation, dislocation and bony debris are apparent on plain radiograph. And when we talk about uh, the stage 2 which is called as coalescent stage and in this particular stage the clinical signs of inflammation decrease and radiological signs of fracture healing can be seen and resorption of the bony debris and the new bone formation are evident in this particular stage. And finally the stage 3 is called as reconstruction stage and in this particular stage the redness, warmth and swelling have resolved and bony deformity which may be stable or unstable is present and radiographs may show mature fracture callus and decreased sclerosis. Especially the Charcot neuropathy can be clinically classified as active that is stage 0, 1 and 2 and inactive that is stage 3 especially to indicate if the process is in the acute stages or in the reconstruction stage which is also known as the remodeling or consolidation phase which has a bearing on the nature as well as timing of the surgery. Let us talk about the treatment of this condition guys and the treatment involves non-surgical as well as the surgical treatment. Non-surgical treatment includes protective splinting, walking brace, orthosis or cast. 
Early weight bearing is allowed in stage 1 by 40% of the specialist and in stage 2 by 49% of the specialist and other specialists recommended uh, non weight bearing as per the recent research but uh, whether we should go with weight bearing or non weight bearing completely depends upon the doctor who is treating you the condition. And after stable healing is noted in the stage 3, treatment includes accommodative footwear with protective orthosis. So this is what is about non-surgical treatment we can say and when we talk about the surgical treatment, select patients with instability in the early stages may be treated with open reduction and internal fixation and fusion and in the later stages surgical options may include realignment, osteotomy and fusion that is correction of the deformity or osteectomy that is removal of the bony prominence that could cause an ulcer. This is what is about uh, the surgical treatment. So by this we completed the important condition called as uh, Charcot neuropathy.